Oh, what a bochy! In the garage today we have an Audi A3 TDI and yes it's a shooting brake and uh, cause of a complaint with this one, quite unusual he has a burning smell in the cabin when he puts the heater fan on and yes with a few toys out So this car is a, a 2014 model year 80 2 liter TDI, as I said. And uh, I've already this diagnosed or I've already found what the problem is. But anyway, you may find this interesting. This may be uh, pretty important to people. So yeah, we've got uh, we've got the glove box out. I'll give you a bit of light now. Need a bit of light. That's the glove box in the boot in the back there in the boot and uh, there's a few wires hanging there and uh, let's see we get a bit brighter there we are so anywho the problem is with this thing is when he puts the heater on and this is why it was described to me when he puts the heater on and the air comes out these vents he smells a burning smell. He smells a burning rubber type of thing, you know. So it was a wee bit hard to replicate. And at first, I thought, well, "What's what's going on here? I couldn't really couldn't really smell anything myself." And you know, he came. He brought the car. The owner brought the car with an guy who said that he had no sense of smell and he couldn't smell anything. So anyway, so we got the car into the garage here, and uh, I ran the engine. And uh, to see, you know, is the smell coming from the engine or whatever. There was no smell in the engine bay. So I pulled, I went ahead and, uh, you know, just went, uh, well, well, just to keep the guy happy. Well, have a wee look, see, and we'll pull the fan. Now, it all works and the fan works and there's no noises, there's no nothing audible. And uh, everything looks grand. And then get you yeah, in the focus there a wee bit. And uh, that's the f underneath the fan motor there. Uh, all looks pretty good, everything works, there's no funny noises and all that there. However, on a visual, pure visual inspection, having a wee look around, we found this. Aha, uh -huh. now, if we can get you in on that, that is melting. That wire to that thing there, which is beside the heater matrix. So you can see the uh, the silver pipe there. That's the, the normal heater matrix coming in from the, you know, the, the hot, the hot uh, coolant from the, the engine. So beside it there is that brown wire. And, uh, well, it's cooking, the looks of it. So we'll get a wee bit of information up here and uh, we'll find out what this is, what it does, and what I'm going to do about it. So it's that item there. Number two on screen, and uh, so it's described as the auxiliary air heater element ZF35 item two is installed in the vicinity of the heat exchanger for the heater. So basically, what this is, it's uh, the TDIs are fitted with an electric heater, so it uh, gives you a bit of heat because uh, it takes a wee while for the the engine to warm up. Petrols do not have this, and it is an electric heater. It's not a Wabasto type that runs off uh, fuel. So uh, vehicles with a high voltage system are currently not fitted with uh, this Z35, is what it's called. Or vehicles with a TDI engine without the high voltage system, the electric supplementary heater, auxiliary or heater element, is activated by the ECU, and uh, blah, blah, blah. There we go, and uh, okay. Currently only fit it with TDI auxiliary. Uh, yeah, it says there it's an optional extra, but as far as I can see, it's fitted to most of the TDIs. So we'll find out a wee bit more about this. A bit more information. Uh, check and activation. Heat energy is added there after it leaves the heat exchanger, blah, 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 blah. Right. So to protect battery 
and vehicles with start stop system the activation of the auxiliary heater is switched off when the stop function is active so there's certain prerequisites uh, preconditions for this thing to actually run because it does use uh, quite a bit of electrical energy as far as i can gather it's a one kilowatt heating element basically and uh, so yeah so if you have low voltage uh, the alternator isn't outputting various other things this thing will not function but clearly it has been functioning in this car because it is melting that wire there so there's cut in criteria for that uh, let me see engine run for at least eight seconds uh, yes engine temperature below 75 degrees centigrade and calculated ambient temperature below six so this makes sense to me because when I had the car in the garage, I couldn't really smell this burning smell that the punter was complaining about. So I probably had, the time the guy drove here and, you know, I had, had the engine run in the, in the garage. So the engine temperature probably would up. So the, uh, this, this heater would not have been active and the smell that he was complaining about, the smell of burning rubber, basically went away. So uh, the other thing is that it only operates whenever it's cold weather. So below six degrees centigrade, so in the summertime or more or less any other time of year, he probably wouldn't have smelled anything because the heater is inactive. Uh, start, stop, start, stop system not active. Electrical system voltage above 12.2 volts. No faults uh, stored in the uh, that's probably the HVAC units there, so it has to uh, it has to have uh, it has to be pretty happy for all this to happen. More than ninety percent of the air uh, position of temperature flaps is being read at the heat exchanger left or right, and uh, there's the load of the alternator is above ninety five percent. Oh, that's that's cut off criteria. Whenever the ambient temperature gets above eight, it does not function. So, okay, Z35, we'll have a wee look, see if we can find out anything else. So I had a wee search through my uh, database on uh, a Z35 component to see if there's any known problems or known faults. Now, I wasn't able to come up with anything specific to this, uh, this particular vehicle and this model year and an A3, but I did find something which... Uh, may be of interest now it's uh as i say it's for a completely different car but it's part of the volkswagen group so specific vehicle manufacturer there is a possibility here i'm reading here that the earth wire of the auxiliary here electric heating element is not properly screwed in an earth wire that is improperly screwed improperly screwed on can cause thermal overcharge and in the worst case a fire in the vehicle the correct tightening of the auxiliary heating element earth wire must be checked and it gives a vin range and all that as i say that's not this vehicle but it's basically telling us uh what the crack is what is the fault damage what effective vehicle has an excessive and inadmissible pass resistance in the auxiliary air heater element earth wire that brown wire is an earth wire, by the way, in case I didn't mention it. Due to a tightening error, the auxiliary error heater element earth wire not screwed on properly. And an auxiliary electric error heating is only installed in diesel vehicles without stationary heating. Uh, so I think that's a fuel driven heating system. And there's a little picture of something very similar to what we saw earlier. An incorrect tightening of the earth wire can cause a fire in the vehicle. So, there we go, what's in that? Nothing. So there we go, I think that's it. Oh, there's something else, what's that? And, risk of burns. Check that the earth wire is probably screwed on. To do this, unscrew the earth wire a few turns and tighten it again to nine Newton meters. Well, I think we're beyond that. Okay, so 
Uh, we can actually turn this thing on with uh, better action control and scan tool. So this brown wire up here, and we don't like to look off. It looks as if it's been melting. Just from a visual, we will uh, put the voltmeter on. 11.93 volts. And the ignition is on at the minute, and the battery is getting a bit low. But we'll be all right for, for this wee test. We'll see the voltage dropping rightly here. So we'll put an ammeter on too. Uh, I'll just uh, zero that. Okay. That'll be grand. Look at that right there again. See if you can see that. Not bad at all, right? Okay. So there's two. There's two relays. There's a, there's a low heat output relay and a high heat output relay. So uh, okay. Well. Energize the low one. That's it on. I'll click on and off here. It'll not be constant, and the ammeters are in the wrong way, but not to worry. So there's 24 amps there. You can maybe hear the relay clicking. I'll just stop that. And uh, I'll do the high heat relay here on the scan tool. Here we go. So it's nearly 50 amps. It's pulling. And we'll stop that. And we'll just. Uh just take that off for a second. For that clump. And we'll put the imager on it. And uh, let you see that. Uh, you can't really see that. Aha. Uh -huh. That's better. So, there's our wire there. Let's give you a still of that. There we go. So there's our lug. And our wire. So I think for more information then, you know, this is clearly melted. And uh, it's, uh, I think it's a bad crimp here. I don't think that it's the, it's the nut that isn't tightened as per that, uh, that button. You know, because you would think that the threads and all would be uh, discoloured, but uh, definitely that insulation has been melting, and that concurs with uh, the customer smelling uh, a smell of burning rubber through his uh, ventilation system when he's got the blower on. So we'll have to, uh, I'm going to see if we can get a bit of wire of that same cross section area. So it's multi stranded. Conductor there, and uh, yeah, so it'll be sort of like tri rated. So, yeah, so quite a big thick earth wire. It's pulling 50 amps, and uh, we'll have to relug it. Maybe try and do a crimp, a crimp and solder on up the wire and try and free this up some way. And yeah, okay, we'll see what we can do. I've taken this earth wire off, and it looks as if this unit is damaged. So, there's no way that's going to make a good connection there. So, I think the, the heat has, uh, has damaged this. So, obviously, up being loose, we're not going to get a good connection there at all. Unfortunately, to take this unit out, we'll have to remove the center console. That's it there, sitting in, in the driver's seat.
So I'll get a better look at this. And yeah, it's definitely spinning there. And uh, there's a wee bit of heat at the back there. So I've tried to take this apart. There's a couple of wee clips here and I've just broke them off to try and praise this out. But it's all, uh, all these connections are riveted. So yeah, I'd say that's the three main elements there. So there's three connections, one, two, three. And this is the earth that for, for all three then. So, you know, that's taking the, the heap then. So, yeah. I think there's much we can do about that, uh, bar replace it. So this is our wee lug, and it actually doesn't look that bad really there, whenever you strip it. You know, the lug wasn't really heating. Uh, it's, it must be in this crimp, and the heat transfer has melted that. And uh, that's the insulation. So that's customer complaint, if you recall, was a smell of burning rubber in the cabin. So a bad smell in the cabin. And uh, yeah, well, that's bound to be it, you know. So we've managed to get a replacement, second hand. And it says on Mark 7 Golf, it's exactly the same. And uh, as with, uh, must be out of a breaker. So got this online at uh, our favorite marketplace. And uh, yeah, so doesn't look as if it's been burning there. The insulation's still there. It's just a pity he didn't leave a wee tail of that earthware there. So, well, we'll mix something up, repair that wire. So we've extended that earthware there, and uh, it's crimped. And there's a wee bit of solder on it as well. And uh, that's a a butt connector, and it's crimped. And I ran a wee bit of solder on that as well. So a wee bit of shrink on that, and I've made it a wee bit longer, so that should do the job. That's our repair complete, and I just went ahead and put the console and everything back in again. That's how much confidence I have in my own work. And uh, we'll just uh, run the high output relay again here, uh, just to see if there's any heat about the place. So we'll start that. Just put the ammeter on it just to make sure. Yeah, pulling about 50 amps on and off. Forty amps as it tighten up. So it is heating up. We can see out in the thermal. Yeah. Happy with that. We'll go ahead and put the car back together again, I think. So what we could see on the thermal imager, or more so what we could not see, was the wire heating up. Now I could see it if you look closely, I could see the, the, the outline of it in the, in the image, and you know, it wasn't heating up, and I was touching it with my fingers there, I was just gingerly touching it, and it was like touching this lug here, stone cold. So what I used there was that side of a, an old loom, that I had, that's an earth wire, exact same size, it's 6mm multi-stranded. I did not use, I elected not to use that lug there because the hole's far too big. So what I was able to procure was uh, some of these things for those guys that are interested, if you ever have to do something like that. So that was out of uh, an electrical wholesaler, a bag of 6mm lugs. 
I double crimped it and then I heated it up and uh, got a bit of solder run into the hole on the lug and those are butt connectors uh, six mil to six mil and again a double crimped each side and then heated it up uh, very lightly with uh, a light flame on in the car on the dash and uh, run a bit of solder uh, into the hole and in uh, at either end you know with uh, put a load of flux around the conductor before I insert it into the uh, into the connector so anywho right so we're going to prove this thing's uh, problem the problem uh, you know so it did say at the start it looks like it's a bad crimp but you know I'm starting to think that the actual cause was the heater itself and and you know created the wire to to heat up but uh, you know the wee bulletin thing that we read uh, said about the nut that goes on here being loose the nut that was on this bio here was perfectly tight it was good and tight so uh, no, you know, there was no, no problem that way on this particular occasion so it looks like to me that it was the problem was the the unit that failed uh, so the connection inside it and uh, it's uh, it's really loose so uh, whenever I wiggle the, the stud about so we're graphing resistance here this is this is resistance so and I'm just on the one of the elements so there's three uh, there's three connections in here uh, whenever I was doing the bi-direction control there it shows a low heat relay and a high heat relay so it shows two relays but uh, that was just the options on the bi-direction control however there's three connections in here I'm just on the middle one uh, which is the one I can stick my crock on easy but uh, let's see so we'll give that a wee agitation and that's that's actually open circuit now so yeah there's it joined again so I'm not moving the I'm not moving the the crack there so that's how we so yeah definitely uh, not good so there we go we will wobble about and it actually spins as well so a bit of melting there as well so yeah that's why we did what we did and uh, yeah somebody said to me that uh, you know you have a blower blowing air and you have loads of plastic loads of combustible material about the place loads and loads of buckets of plastic everywhere and you know soundproofing and fibrous material and then you have this uh, heat source so that is the perfect fire triangle uh, so yeah okay need to make sure that was a good definitely a good connection and this positive temperature coefficient heater PTC heater so basically and as we saw on the, the clamp, clamp meter the ammeter there that I clamped on we saw it happening uh, I didn't just hold it on for that long but uh, you know it started off whenever it started heating up started off I said I think in the commentary it was about 50 amps and then if you if you notice there it went down it, I think it went to about 38 amps or something like that as the relay started you know clicking off so that was this thing heating up so as, the, as that heated up then uh, the resistance increases and then the current sort of decreases so as this thing heats up the current actually decreases so yeah so that's really the way it works but the main thing about this thing is it only actually comes on under those certain conditions that we said uh, earlier on in the video. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. We have a bit more information maybe for you. We have a bit more on, on what's going on in your car. And uh, as always, thanks very much for watching. And all the best. And 